Oh god. Oh. Do you uh, think there's people who actually join us at four o'clock? Uh, like, no. Uh, probably not. Probably not. Uh, how's it going to none of our viewers? <laughs> Hello, Bobbit. How's it going? Hello. Remember to watch the chat, Karen. That's your job. I am. Um, I've got it. Don't worry. You got it. You got it. All right. Um, yeah. I guess I'll intro. Today we're uh, we're looking at ZBrush. Uh, I think Is it Z or ZBrush? Oh, it might be ZBrush. Controversial already. <laughs> it's kicking uh, off already. <laughs> we've, we've got two uh, special guests today. We've got uh, Dan Bullock and Josh Swarbrick. Oh. They're uh, pretty good at the old Z brush, Z brush. Ah. I'm going to call it Z brush. Thank you. Mike. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, what we do every episode when we get a new person on is uh, they show us a bit of their work, um, tell us a bit about themselves, and then we get to it. So I don't know um, which one of you two wants to go first. Dan, do you want to go first? <laughs> Looks like you've already got your stuff yeah. up. Yeah, I'll go first. I got my stuff up. So this is my most recent project. It's the uh, Helm to Character for yeah. you know, 30 briefs. Mm. So uh, yeah, just a little spin around. That's what Very she is. Nice. Like a big, uh, she's a, a guard of a you know, futuristic palace was the mm. idea for her. And if you want, I can go through like a little really like rundown of what I did for that project. So, so you know, I've got it all on my blog. It's a, uh, you know, start with referencing, and then this one was a bit different. So I was just concepting in Zebra throughout the project. It didn't work for concept. So it was all playing about. So these were all like, um, you know, just concepting, pushing things around, trying different forms and just iteration and everything. And then, yeah. Cool. That's really nice. Materials, different helmets, trying out some different like, exoskeleton things for the legs, which ended up like... Oh. Oh. Let's go back on her. See her legs. So that's how they ended up in the end. Hmm. Uh, legs, hands. That's just like the protest for the... Character. So it's about oh, really? quite a lot from where it started. Mm. Growth I didn't know you went through so much um, iterations, man. It's really cool. This is really cool. Yeah, yeah, I'm seeing yeah it. it's just because like, cause, cause for this brief, you don't get a concept. I mean, Chris could throw out a concept in a day, but I couldn't. So <laughs> yeah. I just made up of the one. It wasn't the full concept. It was just a picture. <laughs> <laughs> and I put a helmet on it. That was it. <laughs> It counts, man. It counts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, these are awesome. And then you get to look at all my texture sheets as well, if you fancy. So, Dan, you you would consider yourself a character artist, right? I would, yeah. yeah. More of a character artist than anything else, though. <laughs> yeah. And then my at last previous character was Alice for the Alice Online project in the second year. Mm-hmm. That's how she turned out. Clothing on my eyes. Oh man, those are some nice yeah, windows. Uh, what else have I got on here? This is my portfolio website, by the way. Dambulacart.com. A nice plug. <laughs> yeah, that's some fun of that. Everyone check it out. <laughs> the portrait from last year. Demon mm, character. Reminds me of that film. Second year character. And some other random character stuff. But yeah, that's yeah, my long enough intro, isn't it? <laughs> awesome. Uh, so, Very yeah, nice cool. stuff. Very experienced uh, Zebrusher. Zebrusher? Zebrusher. I'm just going to call it Zebrush. That's what. Z tomato. <laughs> Very experienced tomato brusher. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Josh, do you want to show a bit of your work then? Uh, okay, I'll see if screen sharing works. All right. um, I'm just going to show you my art station because I don't have a portfolio or anything cool like cool. that. Um, <laughs> yeah. Tell me if it's art station uh, working. Yeah. Um, no. Okay. So is it not working? No. <laughs> that was a no, Josh. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I haven't got much stuff on here because um, this is just all the stuff I guess I like that I've made. Um, I'll just go you through a gonna. few things. Uh, it's not sure. Oh, um, okay, um, click yeah, on screen sharing. I can see it. I can see it. Yeah, it just came up. It just... Oh, okay. 
where. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, this is, a, this is something I did like quite recently. This is over the summer. I did like a dinosaur sculpt. Um, oh, yeah. Been learning how to use marvelous and stuff like that. Doing kind of like realistic characters and like realistic clothing and stuff. Ignore the hair in this one. Um, but you guys lost place to that I never actually. Um, but yeah, I've got uh, what else? There's my character that I did for off the map, the Alice one. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's the yeah the end result of it. It's nice. The game ready character. Um, yeah, that's what more it is. recently, I guess, um, been kind of getting into hard surface stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. This one I did um, in 3ds Max because I hadn't started any hard surface in ZBrush at the time. And although 3ds Max like is probably I'd say maybe better for it for me, it mm. also takes a lot longer. Um, to do hard surface in 3ds Max, like it, ZBrush gets yeah. so fast once you get used to it, once you really get into it. Whereas this helmet took me absolutely ages. Like, I it was ca countless hours I spent on this, and then I just mm. got really frustrated because it's taking too long, and then I gave up. So, <laughs> um, more recently, uh, this is the, the character I just finished this week. Um, yeah. The Aviator mobile game character. Turned out um, really nice. We got some wireframes for that. Um, this is kind of a cheat though because these renders uh, there's normal maps <laughs> on the character and we weren't allowed normal maps. Oh, but I thought my art station one, I had to keep the normal map on because it looks so nice. Yeah, just um, yeah, but yeah, portfolio. Yeah, so um, yes, like six thousand seven hundred tries I think mine was. Uh, the mm, limit nice. was seven thousand and um, yeah, it's it supposed to be just using diffuse, but this is with normals as well, I guess. Mm -hmm. but yeah, that's about it for my work, I think. Um, other than um, like the hard surface stuff I've been working on in ZBrush lately, if yeah, my yeah. computer will actually work. Um, <laughs> DMU. We've got too many character artists on this show, damn it. Where's the environment guys at? This <laughs> is the character. <laughs> I'm doing environments next. Yes. Oh, look at that. Yeah, uh, nice. this was a quick. Uh, it's supposed to be an over paint, but then I just put some colors on and some dirt and then gave up. But uh, <laughs> this is what I've been making recently for the helmeted character project, where I'm starting to learn the basics of hard surface stuff in Zebra. Oh, cool. And it's really fun and really fast to use as well. So you can just uh, make a lot of random shapes and just start playing around with them, kind of do like uh, kit bashing in ZBrush, I guess. Mm. Yeah, like a, yeah, yeah. Really fast way of concepting if you're not very good at drawing like me. So, but yeah, yeah, I think that's about it. We got all the ZBrush experience. You know, everyone knows uh, Chris is uh, very experienced in it as well, and uh, I've played around in it a bit. <laughs> so yeah. It's, going it's be all good. right. <laughs> I think out of everyone here, I'm the only one that doesn't know how to use ZBrush properly, so <laughs> for that reason, I'm, I'm just in charge of the chat this week. Mm. Okay. Um, no one's saying anything. <laughs> John, John was here yes. for a bit, but that was about it. <laughs> no, we know John's still there. Uh, I guess uh, we should jump into it. I could uh, start with um, just, you know, the basics. The actual controls and stuff. Yeah, so <laughs> is this on my screen now? Kids. I don't know, there's two of you. Um, yeah, so this if you open up ZBrush, this is what it should will normally look like. I'm just in charge of it's really room. dark gradient. Um, I, I don't like see you. Do, yeah, I do. What, what I like to do is um, just put new document and uh, hit no, and that just gives you a wider space. Yeah. And then I like to, uh, if you go onto a document again, and go down to range here, just turn that down so you don't have that horrible gradient. <laughs> That's what I like to do to start, basically. <laughs> Get rid of the gradient. They're definitely the key thing. Right there. Yeah. And then, uh, I guess, uh, you just start by throwing an object in. So if you go to the top right, you have tool. That's no That will normally just come up with your normal basic thing. And then here you'll have your tools. If you go onto the big one and uh, hold that down, I think, or just select it, you'll pull out this option with all your different shapes. Normally, mm -hmm. uh, People normally start with either a sphere or a cube or something, or a, a cylinder. That also use Z spheres or Z spheres. Uh, people use for that stuff as well, which we'll probably talk about a bit later. And so yeah, basically you uh, I can do this. 
get one of those, you just click and drag it in, and then you want to go straight and hit edit, or you'll just end up drawing another one in and another one, mm -hmm. and just, uh, you know, ruin your day. <laughs> so once you hit edit, um, people, I think people normally uh, make it a poly mesh. Yeah, yeah, is, uh, yeah. Like we realized recently that if you don't make it like a poly mesh 3D, like the transpose tool doesn't work properly. It's always yeah. just non-existent. It's really weird. It's uh, like because me and Sam are trying to work that out recently when we had problems with it. Mm. Um, also, uh, you want to probably put it in perspective. So if you just go to here in this little selection of stuff, throw that into perspective, or just press P on your keyboard. And uh, normally when I'm starting, I throw in the floor as well, so you know it's like see here it was upside down. I didn't know that, so that's why you, sometimes you want to have the floor in. Uh, for moving around, I uh, never do that. I always get my own characters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we we'll moving around, uh, just uh, uh, left click and drag to uh, look around the object. Uh, control and, oh no, control and right click is zoom. And control and drag is to mask off an area if you like only wanted to do something in that area. Um, also, everyone always says uh, take it off the red wax because it Makes everything look horrible. Yeah, red wax. Uh, doesn't. Gross. Yeah, it doesn't really represent what it's meant to look like. So normally you put either basic material or a matte cap grey on. That's just a lot nicer. Um, when I like to start as well, I like to immediately just start dynameshing it. So basically, all that does is if I put it on a, a polyframe, you can see what the geometry looks like. Dynamesh basically. Uh, Whatever this resolution is, it will put that um, resolution of geometry around your object. So if I hit that, it will just uh, take a second to turn through. See, so it puts that like information all around the object, so you can sculpt quite nicely. Um, the other way to do that is to subdivide, uh, which is basically the same thing, but it uh, turns your uh, quads into four more quads. So if I take moving off and do that, you can see what that does. And uh, I'm going to show you. Yeah, so you can see it's quadded the quads again and again. So that's the two <laughs> ways people uh, get more geometry. Uh, people do, I, th I think mostly people will dynamesh to start off with to get the general shape, and then uh, subdivide for like cleaner details. Um, mm -hmm. If anyone wants to correct me on that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Dynamesh is dynamesh really cool. cool. But just uh, like if I move this around, as you can see, like look how warped that geometry is. There's yeah. like literally a square there. So Dynamesh cleans all that up. It quads it all. Yeah, really nicely. Um, that's kind of the basic. Um, just for getting started. Uh, brushes. Probably should have started with that a bit earlier. Um, <laughs> you got your kind of basic uh, brushes. Uh, there's the standard brush, which is uh, if you want to just get up in uh, uh, tools, it's you press B and then S and then T. That'll bring up your uh, basic brush, your standard brush, which uh, just looks like this. Oh, Danish. So that just kind of looks like this. Hello. And. Uh, the other one that people use is a clay brush, which is, uh, will come up here is this one, clay, which kind of looks like this. That one's a nice brush, I like that one. Which is also B, C, L in your hotkeys. Um, but hotkeys aren't important because uh, you might end up changing UI, and then that will have its own custom hotkeys and stuff. But I quite like the normal ones because it's almost like, a, I like to think of it as like combos, in like a game. Like, uh, <laughs> so you can try and press them really fast, like, DCL, you get really fast down, so that's, I don't know, that's just something like a little <laughs> thing to keep you sane. The other one that a lot of people use is uh, uh, Clay Build-Up, which is... Oh, clay, man, that's a devilish brush, that one, Clay Build-Up. Build build <laughs> <up. laughs> <laughs> which, uh, yeah, a lot of people use, because it gets information in really quickly, and uh, so you can, like, if you really want to get into stuff, you can block out things really quickly. Um, 
Yeah, those are kind of the basic. There's also clay tubes, which I think is uh, pretty similar to yeah, pretty much the same. Well, I think it, it, like, um, some brushes, and then you'll you'll figure stuff out yourself. Like so much yeah. clay like, brush and go to all of them because there's some crazy brush in there that you just wouldn't think of using. Isn't it? Yeah, I'm still finding like a new brush and being like, oh, that is the coolest thing. <laughs> so like, um, like you got all these weird details. Like, oh, yeah, that looks like a rock now. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> Those are just a few that you can get you started. Um, but yeah, just play around, just click a brush and see what it does. So like, uh, let's play with one. What does this do? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what you want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's crazy that's stuff. Awesome. Yeah, I've only just learned about these, these IMMs. It's important. Well, if, yeah. We need to get Josh to talk about IMMs. It's the best thing. Yeah, yeah. And those are crazy. all the way. That's all. You... <laughs> so yeah, uh, those are the basics. I guess I'm making a skull now because I just kind of started doing that. Uh, so yeah, who wants to go next? Cover something. Uh, I was going to say that um, if you do have, I'm going to do the back of the head at the moment because it's gross. But if you find like if you're working through brushes or anything really, and you want to make it your own, so if you look at my UI and I have loads of different brush shortcuts and stuff. So throughout the stream, I'm going to be pressing random buttons. If I press B, I go to Snake Hook, because mm -hmm. I thought it's all programmed weirdly for me. Mm -hmm. uh, so like all, all the buttons on my keyboard are a different brush. But if you want to like program your own shortcuts, so say you like you really like play tubes, you press Control and Alt, and you click on something, and then you just press, say I want that to be C, I press C, and now if I press C, forever that is now play tubes, oh, that's which awesome. is really handy like, if you want to do shortcuts quickly. You can also do that, like, um, if I wanted to make the brush panel B, so at the moment B is snake hook. If I wanted to make the brush panel back to B, control, I'll click on that, press B, and okay, mm -hmm. now that'll come up like it is, you know, for default. So you can pretty oh, much yeah. customize it completely. It's a really cool, it's completely customizable uh, you know, program. And yeah, it's just cool, you can do anything with it, really. Yeah. It's a really cool piece of software. Hmm. Uh, what are you up to, Josh? That's looking pretty sweet. Um, I'm. I've got basically uh, the head model from um, from that realistic character I was doing. Yeah. And um, I'm just making. I've made like a sphere around it, and I've then just started using like clay build up and move tool to just kind of like get a cool shape. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna kind of like uh, make like a sci-fi helmet with uh, an open visor, I guess. But if you if you guys want at any point, I can go through like. I guess like uh, how I go about doing stuff like that, how I go about making all the shapes and things. Uh, I don't know. Can I um can I ask you guys what your workflow is making a, a low poly game asset? Do you start off in ZBrush, or do you model low poly in? I always I always start in ZBrush. I yeah, I was actually like, much I, I, start I, I, I much. Low so poly. You... Mine's all ZBrush as well. Oh okay. <laughs> so disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but that's just because like that's you know what what our flow is now, and most of the stuff I'm doing at the moment because we're doing characters, most of them are there's quite a lot of high poly work going on, so mm. making it low poly just I find I just find it easier. Other people have different workflows, but yeah. Easy. Yeah, so it's probably cool to like just talk about um, you know how, what our process is so like starting projects. So I just started like. Making a skull as I normally would do, but mm -hmm. I realised I'd use like a bunch of different tools there that I wouldn't normally you know, think to talk about. Um, can one of you guys show how to add noise to a model? Because that's usually what I do. For those <laughs> of you that don't really like ZBrush, <laughs> I model like something in 3ds Max, import into ZBrush, add noise to it, and then just export and bake it down instead of actually like painting <laughs> in details. Because you get like the fine details of it, and you know it's good enough. Yeah. Um, uh, it's like the shit. What's no. it called? The dishonored work. Sorry, not dishonored. The order workflow. Mm -hmm. Well, like even the smallest asset, they just put into ZBrush, bake some like a bit of noise onto it, and then export it. Yeah, I can't see it. Someone point me, point out to me where noise maker is. Uh, oh, it's, um, oh, we've got a it's question. It's noise. Huh? We've got a question. The noise on the side. What's the question? 
Um, so Mr. John Carney asks, how would you guys approach sculpts in a chicken nugget? Yeah. That's Pretend that's one. like a legit question. Pretend it's a legit question. <laughs> I think that's a wrap up. I've got this, guys. You got a sculpt, a sculpt, a chicken nugget. You get a sphere, and then then you move it. You make it a poly mesh first. <laughs> Turn on your pen tablet because it's probably easier. Mm. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I turned on the pen tablet. It's all good, guys. It's all good. And then you wiggle it about. Mm -hmm. And then what everyone should know is the crumple tool. <laughs> the and then you go like that. Little <laughs> <laughs> work. That's how you make a chicken nugget. <laughs> Oops. And then you subdivide the hell out of it, and then go on surface, and then noise. <laughs> this is how you add noise. I add a heck load of noise, and that's how you do skin pores on your chicken nugget. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> Very good. The more you know. <laughs> Are you guys both making chicken nuggets? Yeah. <laughs> well, no, so on my on my reference, if we look at my chicken nugget reference, there's a right here. There's like a big indent. According to <laughs> make those kind of things, is if you go onto you know, oh, yeah. you're on your mesh. If we get a, you can so I don't think we talked about it earlier to change like the by default if you can hold control and. You know, drawing your model is going to do this. I wanted it to be like a lasso tool. So hold control, press on your brush settings, lasso, and then you can like you know, sculpt out like a wiggly shape. Yeah, you hold cool. control and hold and click on the mesh, it sharpens the uh, mask. And if you hold control and click on it, it you know, unsharpens. If I do that, and then I can use that and move tool and just move that in a little bit. I've got a nice little indent on my mesh. So how, how do you sharpen it? I haven't used that before to sharpen. Uh, cool. Hold control and alt and click on your mesh. Oh, that's it. Like, you know, it's often, but the other way around. Pretty handy. Sweet. Mm. I remember that. Yeah. And then you, know, you can use your move tools up here. We haven't talked about either. So if I, oh, yeah, tools. If I mask an area and the mesh is a bit weird. Uh, inverted and then got rid of that bit. I could use my move tool by pressing there or it's a W. Yeah. That's yeah, w. w. Yeah. Move out here if I wanted to. That's pretty handy for like uh, I use this for you know like the neck of, if I start a portrait, I'll use that to like sculpt out the neck of my character. Mm. And all that stuff. So yeah, and then you can just find that uh, yeah. Be yeah. geometry. That's nice. Uh, just rambling. <laughs> I made chicken nuggets. Look at those chicken nuggets, man. That is delicious. Ooh. Wow. It's like What's a beach. What have you done? What well, have like you done? Beach that? of chicken nuggets. How? <laughs> what happened? I looked away and it's now. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> over and over again. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what happens when you uh, don't hit edit. Yeah, if you don't hit edit, you just do this, and you're like, what's happening? What do I have to sculpt? So, yeah. Remember to do that. Nice. I did that. Can um can you guys, like, legitimately, like, model a piece of sushi? So we can have kind of, like, a a little competition. Oh, are you making some sushi? Because oh, I've, you know, I've gone pretty far by now. You know, it's quite low poly, but... Oh, who wants to take on the sushi challenge? Crystals. <laughs> what is yeah, you, go on, Chris. You, you got you got to prove to our viewers. Go on, Chris. Um, prove why ZBrush is such a good program. No, I'll have a I'll have a go. 
<laughs> I'm going to make a California roll. California roll? Yeah. Ooh. A bit of mayo, you know, it's not bad. A bit of seaweed. The image isn't loading. <laughs> See, because, like, okay, I'm usually, like, I hard surface model everything. Everything I have to model is either a box or a cylinder. <laughs> Sushi is a fucking weird shape. <laughs> <laughs> it's Unless it's a roll. If it's a roll, it's just a cylinder. <laughs> yeah. A cylinder's me. I don't know. What kind of... What? What kind yeah, of fish are we talking about here, then? You're not making a fish. I thought you what meant, like, a, a fish. Okay, so wait, can you guys see my screen? This is the one I'm making right now. Oh, I'll find your reference. What's it? What's it? What's it? What's it? What is that? It's it's a fish on oh, a okay. rice ball with some seaweed. Is it, is it just this? Is it you modeling this? Um, how do I check? <laughs> are you making a cat sushi? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was your ref. That, that's right. <laughs> I think you should just make that in its entirety. Cat. Oh, wow. Wow. So yeah, I would say that okay, ZBrush is good for like natural objects, lumpy mm-hmm. stuff. But actually it's pretty good for hard surface modeling too, isn't it? Like, yeah, I've, uh, I've learned that recently that it, it does some yeah. hard surface stuff really, at least really fast. Um, Can, um, I guess it's debatable whether it's better or not, but... Yeah. Get can, really. can you guys go um just go through a little bit of hard surface stuff because I know that's what I'd like to learn. Yeah, well, Josh, that was you that was doing the stuff most recently. If you wanna, yeah, it's fresh in your mind. Oh me? Oh okay. Um, all right. Uh, there's a there's a few things I guess um that I kind of do like uh, with ZBrush. Um, basically, uh, uh, when it comes to hard surface, one of them I guess. Maybe it doesn't produce the best results. Maybe it's just because I'm uh, not that experienced with using this method yet. But basically, say if I'm going to like extrude like a shape out like that with um, uh, with the clay tool, and then make sure that's dynameshed. Uh, is it going to dynamesh? Yeah, it's just being slow. There we go. And uh, then use tools like H polish. I don't know where that is. Oh, there we go. Oh, I just pressed H there. Um, and then um, basically you just you just smooth out each face kind of like uh, individually how you want it. Uh, do it on the top here as well. I, don't know, I suppose it kind of gets it takes some getting used to, and I'm only just starting out with it as well. Uh, but like I don't know, I've been able to produce some pretty cool stuff with it so far. It's just about experimenting really. Um, mm. But yeah, there's also uh, what I've been. But yeah, you can just make shapes like that. You can. Pro- I could probably increase the intensity, and um, try and make it sharper. It's actually like a box and stuff like that. So it's um, you can get like really creative with the shapes that you're making, um, and then just once you've made all, all the the basic forms and stuff, then start going in with like H polish and stuff like that. There's also a few other cool tools like uh, a trim done out, uh, trim trim last. No, actually, I use a. Uh, trim curve is probably my favorite one. So you can basically, if you've got an edge that you want, basically chop and you select that brush and then you hold control and shift and then move it along like that and you can just make like a perfectly flat surface, which is pretty cool. That's um, really nice. You just do it. Um, and then if you hold alt, you can make curves like that. Although that sometimes comes out a bit weird. I don't really know how to use that one properly. Um, but yeah, another uh, another cool thing I've been learning how to do is um, uh, Z modeling, which basically, if you uh, if you make a polymesh tool and then go in initialize, and then you can select like Q cube or um, mm. Q sphere or Q cylinder, and you can have a cylinder in any direction you want. And then basically, um, once you've got this object, um, you can then go into like the Z modeler tool up here. And then essentially, you're hovering over stuff, and then if you hold A, you've got all these different options, like um, like basically your standard kind of 3ds Max kind of tools, like bevel, bridge, um, extrude, like stuff like that. So if I select extrude, and then you can have like a single poly, so you put your brush over that poly, and then you can extrude things out. Um, it's really useful. Um, That's hold Alt, you can have like multiple selections, and then do it. Uh, 
Yeah, it's ba- it's literally got all the tools that Max has, I think. Well, all the basic ones, anyway. Um, mm-hmm. But they uh, they just kind of like, yeah. I suppose you kind of just kind of work out how to like play around with it until you get the hang of it. I guess I've not, I've literally only just started doing this this morning, so apologies if I have no clue what I'm doing. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we've just got like um, if I wanted to do something like this, um, I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, a bit like a scale tool or something. Another thing you can do if you do like yes, there uh, is. if you do like a model it in 3ds Max and you like ZBrush, there's the uh, Go Z button, which I haven't used, but I know that some people do, which mm. pretty much puts it straight into Max. You can model in Max and then put it straight back into ZBrush, so you can do like a yeah. nice uh, nice flow on your workflow. So you can use both programs for like whatever that was most useful. So if you were making like a cat's yeah. face, you can use ZBrush, and if you wanted to make like a a hard bit of your sushi, you can do that in, in Max and stuff. Uh, again, that's not something I've used personally. That is really cool, though. Yeah, like I'm, I'm really surprised with how kind of like how much they've put into this, like actually making it like a proper modeling tool. It's nothing like ZBrush at all. It's crazy. Um, I just see that. Start making lots of crazy, uh, crazy shapes and stuff, and then you can just take it, um, like start subdividing it. Oops, actually that was a bad idea. I need to add some more loops into that, so it's going to keep its shape first. Um, where am I going to put loops? Oh yeah, basically, um, if you've just got your, your, your like your standard uh, Z modeler tool up, then if you just select a uh, edge instead of a face, then you can just kind of like drag um, edge loops in. Like nice and simple, which is pretty cool. <laughs> That's um, oops. Um, Josh is asking, that looks ask right. Mike about the snake loop tool. I, I don't know what that means. Oh snake yeah, snake hoops. What? Snake hook. Snake hook. Oh, snake. Yeah, right. that's all. It's just like yeah. an ad hoc uh, move. Yeah, it basically it's a move tool, but it's like instead of move is very kind of gently, where snake hook uh, moves everything. I've found like a snake hook, like if you're doing hard surface stuff, to try get like a sharper corner, because um, mm. obviously the move tool, like you said, is really soft and stuff. Snake hook, you can kind of make like really nice pointed, uh, pointed edges, and then go over it with the polish tool. Yeah, I've never actually used it before. I was just Beautiful. looking into it uh, earlier, which is why Joshua was saying <laughs> that yeah. is that's something I should be using. It's awesome. I like pinch and stuff. It's pretty good for getting nice edges on there. So actually, I don't I don't use the default one. I've got a custom one that I got off a website that was you know something just pinch. But it's effectively this is your the pinch brush, which like yeah, get some stuff in on there. Hmm. Uh, Pinch that I'll like pull these polygons together and get, get like a nice edge. Yeah. And then if you turn on lazy mouse, to do that you either press L and that will be like the default lazy mouse setting, or stroke lazy mouse and then you can play with all these settings here. Also, something cool you can do is if you press Alt and you press on a menu, it puts it in the, it puts it up to the side for you, so it's easy to access. Um, yeah, pinch a laser mouse. Just another one of those handy things on hard surface. Yeah. Just, yeah, all the playing. Also, I'm not sure if you've, you've used it, Josh. The, um, have you used the deformation tools in ZBrush? Um, no, I don't think so. What are they? So, like, deformation, I'll, I'll do it on this thing. If I lasso, if I mask out this part of the my model and sharpen that a bit. The deformation tools like there's you know, all these different ones here. If you press like inflate and drag that oh, out. Oh okay. Oh inflate okay. it's kind of like an That's extrude. so cool. So you know that's yeah. a hard surface. If, if this was divided a bit more. Uh, yeah I did not know about that. I really wish I'd, I'd knew about that before. Yeah, and you can get like a really nice sharp on that edge with that. Inflate, we've got a nice you know, Hard edge. 
in Dynamite if you want them. Yeah, do all the stuff with it. There's a bunch of other tools in here as well, like you know, skew and tape and all random mm -hmm. stuff that if you play with they have different effects. Pretty handy, but yeah, inflate's definitely the, the one that I've used the most. Oh, there's a noise tool. Oh, Here, I found noise. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's delicious. Oh. <laughs> that's pretty fun. Also, with um, with that, if you've got like a bunch of sub tools, um, say I. You know when, like, if your things are the wrong scale and you couldn't, like, scale them properly? And, like, you were trying to scale them, like, what's happening? Have you had that? Mm. Yeah. Yeah? Or, like, you can use the size tool and that'll do it nicely. And that'll yeah, just scale it. Really cool. And, like, you can repeat it other. Uh, we can't. And then it'll... So if you had, like, 100 sub tools, you want you you to all scale up. You could... Your size and then repeat the other, and it will scale up your hundreds of subtools all at once. So, and you can hmm. that was that. So, what are you guys working on at the moment? Because I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not actually watching the stream. <laughs> 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 I'm doing a bit of I go, I go into the sushi, the sushi zone for a bit. Yeah. How's your sushi going, here? I think it's going quite well. Yeah? Oh, I need to load my UI. I haven't actually looked at what other people are doing anymore. Dan, your, uh, your sushi cat's looking real nice. Cheers, man. <laughs> oh, man, you what? Are you actually making one? Yeah? Oh, this is that. Oh, I feel bad. I feel bad now. I'm like the only person not doing sushi, but I don't know how I can really make sushi hard surface. <laughs> you could just, uh, you know, put a fish on top of it. Yeah. Maybe some robot oh, uh, sushi now. Robot sushi. I'm so bad at making things quickly though. This is going to be so gross. Mm. Yeah. Um, can you guys like save out what you make so then I can just steal it? <laughs> Please and thank you. I think you might have given the game away here a bit, like, I'm not sure you meant the Do you have the good in your in the next project? Is that why you wanted to make it? Sorry, what? Sorry? Are you making sushi for your next project? Yeah, yeah. I'm doing the shop front. Uh, are you doing a sushi restaurant? Oh, oh yeah. sushi restaurant. Sushi restaurant in a Zen garden in a busy Tokyo city. Well, Tokyo well, is a city. I say that, but I'm probably going to change it. That sounds pretty cool, actually. Tomorrow. Um, would you do foliage in um, in, Z in ZBrush? Yeah, I still haven't come up. Is that possible? Yeah, probably. Uh, yeah. Uh, I personally probably wouldn't choose to do it in ZBrush, but maybe that's just because I don't know how to do it properly. Yeah, but like, because obviously most foliage is all just like alphas and stuff like that. So you can use after to do it where you can actually play around. I don't know what they are. I wouldn't really know where to go in with Z, but I don't use Max enough to, like, you know. I know how to make it Max, but I don't use it enough anymore, but it would be, like, the easiest thing. So I might try and learn mm -hmm. how to do it in Z, but I can get, like, especially if you're doing, like, trees, doing it for, like, art, you know, and all that stuff. That would be good in ZBrush. But I don't really know, do I? Oh, that's kind of disgusting. Creepy as that look. Also, if anyone was watching my screen, um, I just put in some cylinders, some spheres for the eyes. And if you want to do that, it's yeah, tools, uh, uh, insert, 
And did we say it before that if you press a button, it'll isolate by, you know, that better? So if I press I, it'll isolate all the talking with I, and then into that sphere, yeah. and then bunch of spheres. Which is handy. It took me ages to figure that out. Yeah, definitely. I don't want to realise how people will actually play like guys and the characters. They just always appeared. Man, Snake Hook. Snake Hook is really cool. Did you talk about Dan Sanders? I play uh, Yeah, he's cool. What colour is soy sauce? Brown? Oh, brown? Is it brown? It's like a... I think so. Brown, yeah. You're supposed to be using ref, man. Yeah. Sorry? How are you, spe How are you supposed to do a good game out without ref? I've got ref. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> whatever. I've got ref in black and white. <laughs> <laughs> black and white. <laughs> I've got one screen, guys. I can't see any. Like, oh, it's <laughs> really difficult. I feel, I feel your pain, man. We could demonstrate poly painting as well. What? We could demonstrate poly painting. Yeah, as well. yeah, that would be. Yeah. So, poly painting, did you say? Yeah. So if you go on, you know, in your tool palette, press colorize and poly paint, and then uh, on your brush, you can either just change it to go RGB instead of Ziad, and then you can. Yeah. And color. Ziad is basically moving the geometry. So if you switch that off, you're just putting the color in. And you can paint some angry little eyebrows. And then, like, the same thing as before, if you press Alt, press Alt and then click on, like, this color wheel, mm -hmm. color square, it'll pop out with it. So you can have a bigger color wheel and all these other things, like, fill object and. Yeah, right, jazz, which is pretty handy. And then I'll clicking on a tool. Sam only found that out the other day, which was quite fun. If you, um, yeah, I'll click on a tool. It selects that tool. So I would recommend knowing that if you don't yeah. know. Because you didn't know that, did you, Josh? Yeah, day. I only found that out the other day, and it was like, like I've been using ZBrush for so long. And like manually going into the subtool tab and selecting each subtool individually. Yeah. <laughs> There's so much cool stuff. Um, should we talk about alpha brushes and stuff like that? Yes. Yeah, I have so much more experience with that. I've only start, really started using that. Um, I haven't really used them that much. I suppose cool. it's quite a simple concept, really. Um, yeah. Like, uh, Say if I wanted to use like the standard brush, and I wanted to make, uh, I don't know, they haven't they haven't got much cool shapes already yeah. like default on here, but uh, I suppose I could do like a ring thing like this. So um, I'll probably ch change the uh, stroke to drag rectangle because that's just easier. Um, yeah. And then you can drag it out, and then it's basically like, yeah, it's basically like the shape that the, the actual brush is yeah. and you can download tons of them on the Pixelogic website or from different websites I guess people probably upload their own like uh, I can imagine there probably be like poly count yeah, threads where people have posted lots of videos. Yeah. Yeah. like because I found a really good poly count thread for um, insert mesh brushes which man they are so good oh you like, should uh, um, that stuff. yeah oh. should I show like just a quick tutorial on uh, insert mesh brushes I'll yeah, use my favourite one, uh, <laughs> the, the belt tool. Wait a minute, do they have another belt tool on here? I don't think they do. Oh no, I've got. I think I've got the. Uh, I think I've got an old one that doesn't have the belt. Oh, that would be what I hadn't used wait it before. <laughs> oh wait, I do have it. Here we go. Oh. Here we go. So basically, you get your mesh, you get the belt tool that's called IMM curve, and then you just uh, you just draw a belt, <laughs> and then there it is. There's your belt. <laughs> I love that. It's so easy. You got many belts. <laughs> you got little belts. You can draw big belts. Wait, that didn't work. There we go. Hey. Yeah, it's a it's a really fun tool. <laughs> See, brush isn't cheating. 
No. It's definitely not cheating. <laughs> Man, everyone's project is just going to be covered in belts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they find the legs and so I'm going to brush. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this cat looks so creepy. <laughs> Probably the oh, meant to be a cat. Mmm. <laughs> Yeah, you're having liner tonight. Look at those eyes, man. Oh, no. Ooh, Staring into my soul. Might just leave it there for the rest of the, the rest of the I've uh, I've given my character <laughs> a belt scarf now. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you need. Nice little belt scarf. <laughs> Now, when I first saw you have those, I was like, how the hell did he do that? No. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> I'm just going to leave that belt scarf on there now. That's very nice. That's sweet. Oh, man, that cat is looking really good. <laughs> no, it really isn't. <laughs> no thanks. So I just find zebra really easy for just like quickly blocking in. I mean, it looks gross, but it's, it's like quickly get ideas out, and then it is rubbish start again. So you just can't push these forms around like this quickly in modern program. Yeah, pretty much. That's my gist anyway. Yeah. You guys are painting and everything. How do you do this? What? I know she's yeah. click on the color and then you can paint it on. Oh, I changed yeah. my uh, material that you know is a bit weird, so I'll oh, try yeah. it. Yeah. Um, just hit that and then yeah. choose it. So if I wanted reflecting yellow, <laughs> delicious. Yeah. But you can also like. I'm not sure. Different. Objects have like different materials, so if I wanted the uh, head to be like reflected, mm -hmm. uh, if I go on shiny, it'll change <laughs> all the materials. Shiny cat. What you do then is you go into M at the top, which is the material panel, and then fill object, and then if you go back out to I don't know, basic, then you'll have a shiny head and a uh, mm -hmm. normal torso. Shiny cat, I might do that. That's a little shiny cat. So bad. <laughs> oh dear. Um, so uh, you know, um, for those of you who don't know, um, we finished our project on Friday. We handed it in. We did. Yeah. How how did you guys um, get along? Do you think you guys did well or? If you could do it um, again, I really just like think differently. I'll do everything differently. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I, think I really end up disliking one by the end as well. <laughs> yeah. It's just like it goes well for a while, and then it's really demotivating when you bake it down, and then you just have to like get rid of all the normals and everything, and it's just. Uh, yeah, I mean that was my problem. Just an albedo on a seven thousand card character. I kind of tricked myself into thinking, oh, I'll let this give about a normal. <laughs> I'll let this give, and it just didn't. Uh, yeah. yeah, that'll be one I think I might just work on on weekends and just uh, tweak. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm probably gonna, I'm gonna put out product up for as mine for my portfolio because mm -hmm. it's got some like um, nasty stuff on it. So my nasty scenes. Well, not scenes, but like a where I've made like a it's got like pixelated edges in places. So I'm probably gonna put a 4K on my uh, Hamdu character. Mm. Yeah, I was pretty pleased with Hamdu. Like, I was so nervous at the start just because I was doing a method of like you know, making up as I go along effectively, but it could have gone horribly wrong. It could have gone really badly, but I was quite happy with it in the end. Especially because like we all did so much work over like only three weeks. I think. Yeah, we all did pretty well, didn't we? Or Kieran and two. Kieran and two and two. Are you guys talking shit about me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're picking you up. We're, we're being nice. Go on, model student. 
Yay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm putting my sushi into substance painter. I know we covered this last week. That's what I'm doing as well. <laughs> nice. Substance is much better than Zero Nine. Behind. Hey, Kieran, is there any uh, anything happening in the chat? Any questions? Um, I was talking to John for a bit. That's, that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> you guys can see that conversation if you want. How is John? How is he? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> We have ten people watching, by the way, so that's nice. So Oof, that's pretty, pretty racist. People. I'm I'm assuming we all have it open though, so that's five already. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, I've I've only just opened mine now. <laughs> oh, I can see my thing on the on the screen. <laughs> Are we going to do like a really angry cat? Oh, this so is, it, it seems like once you get used to ZBrush, you can like do like quite a bit of work like in no no time whatsoever. It's like it seems really fast. Yeah, so I was once you're used to it, you're effectively just pushing forms around. And yeah, yeah. So like, wait, so how long have you guys been using ZBrush for? A few uh, weeks. A few weeks. Oh, I don't use like, it really. <laughs> yeah, my first one was probably the. Uh, I used it a little bit for the, for the character project in first year, and then I realised I liked sculpting rather than modelling, so I tried to use it as much. Oh, did, did you use it for the gladiator? Yeah, I used it for the gladiator. Oh, okay. And then like I didn't use it that much after that, and then I used it over summer a bit, and then. Oh, so oh, so you've had a quite a lot of time then. And, well, I didn't really use it, and then like most of the second years, and I actually like painted it properly. Would um would you advise the first years to start learning it now or just wait a bit? Oh, well, like if if you may as well like there's no there's no like I don't think there's anything to learn, it. To learn, I think I mean like the tutors might encourage you to um you know wait and just work on your projects, but I always find that yeah that there's there's like no negative effect of putting your own personal time in and getting better at something. And even like in tech, you know, like, like we were told not to use ZBrush. Yeah, I always, I always hear people say like, yeah, uh, yeah, I always hear people say like, mm. I was, I was gonna say, you always hear people uh, say, oh, don't learn this thing because you're, you need to learn it properly and you're learning bad habits. But everyone I know who's learned something like early or took their own time, being really good at that one thing, like they might mess something up, but then you can just learn that that's not the way you do something. Yeah, and like most of yeah, these, most of these programs, especially ZBrush, I find is like it's all about experimentation, yeah. and you learn so much by just like going into ZBrush and playing around with yeah, yeah. all the different tools, all the different things, and then like watching some tutorials online. I mean, you're gonna learn so much more just by experimenting yourself. Yeah, you know, I was gonna say that the, um, I mean, some people work differently, so I know that it won't Very be much. the best for everyone. But the projects that I've done, that I decided to push myself and learn different software on. So like that did first I use ZBrush, like some other one I use ZBrush or I use like learn different software. I mean there was a risk learning the new software, but at the end of the day it benefited me so much. Yeah. Even along, like, I learned some painter. Uh, it's better to uh, have those risks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And there's like no risk at like, you know. Mm. Second, really, so. Even now I'm still like learning new things and benefiting from it, I find. Mm -hmm. So I think. Go crazy. I would agree. Learn everything. I would agree. Cool. Be good. Yeah. Is there a fur brush on ZBrush, Benny Jones? Kind what of. Have what have we got? What did I use? Oh, just had it. Where's it going? Look at the screen. Uh, if only I wasn't blind, you know. It's called layered pattern. Try that. I haven't used that. That's a lot. That's what I used. Ooh. Oh, I think uh, 
Kieran's Kieran's internet has just disconnected. Ha! Let me. You can make them really beat us. What's this? Uh, subtle. Pen. Yeah. Oh, the card dropped from the call for a bit. Sorry. <laughs> Don't know what happened. <laughs> Chris, that looks really off. Mmm, sushi. <laughs> That didn't really get the colour selection right. What the hell? That's black spot on that. A hole. Oh, I want to show off the coolest tool I haven't used in like a year. <laughs> What's that? It's the uh, radial symmetry. Never heard of it before. What does it do? So, so basically, so symmetry normally is just on the x-axis, so that would do like this. If we go into, where is what are you? Uh, yeah, transform, um, and this is the symmetry pull out, so tap there and it'll appear over here. And then click on radial symmetry and turn on the radial count. It does symmetry like around the oh, point. Oh, that's really cool. This is also awesome for hard surface stuff, by the way. So I can do like. Oh man, you could make an eye. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah, but I was, I um I was trying to look for that tool recently. But yeah. I couldn't find it because I remember I think it was Momo was using it for something last year. Um, but man, I've been looking for that for ages. Yeah, so it's a uh, what did I say? Transform at the top, <laughs> and then I can play with like, the radial count and stuff. Yeah, so that's cool. I'm definitely going to be using that. Yeah, so it's a bit of if you're working on a different sub tool, you have to do um, you have to play with setting the pivot point and stuff, which is just above it, but yeah, you can make it work. I mean, it was a little bit of a faff, and I can't remember how to do it, but it's not not that bad. That's really good. Cool. Automatically, just it was around the center of the scene rather than the center of the object. Mm. That's just great. Like, look what you made with that already. That's you could build like crazy jet engine -y stuff. No, I've I've got a jet engine. All right, if we put yeah. it in. I'll... Look at that! Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> To remember that. So dope. I have to rewatch this episode a few times to <laughs> remember yeah. all the tools. I reckon I could probably do it around the. Hang on, let's try something. Make a new sphere. Tend. Sphere. Oh, this is going to be trippy. Oh, wait, am I crash? <laughs> oh, oh, here we go. Careful. Oh, that's oh cool. cool. <laughs> I've got radial symmetry on the X, Y, and Z axis. <laughs> so, it, it, so it breaks. So don't do that because it breaks ZBrush. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. That's really cool. But, yeah, now it's dying, so I'm gonna leave it. Oh my life. Oh look at that. Right. That is So now I have a, a weapon, right? A funky bullet. <laughs> Let's turn down the radio count a little bit. Oh whoa. Oh, oh god. Looks like some crazy football design. Uh, <laughs> Oh look at that eyes. I think I think you're gonna break it. I really shouldn't have done that. <laughs> I think, I think. <laughs> oh well. 
How's Substance going, Chris? Uh, making, you know, a little Californian roll. What, what materials are you using? Yeah, I'm, right. doing that as well. I'm just making it up as I go. Oh, okay. I'm not using... Is it not a sushi texture? What's, what's good material for seaweed? What's, um... I don't know, what did I do? Something shiny. I, I give it... Monstrous like, really. N no, I was going to do that at one point. I made it quite shiny and quite metallic, that's all. Because when you look at the seaweed, it kind of... It's, it's black, but then it's green as well. The metallic should cool. do that. If I wanted to get a copy of ZBrush, how would I go about getting it? Ah, uh, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> um, is it is it an expensive program? ZBrush is very expensive. Hmm. So if I wanted to get a copy of myself, I'd have to get it through illegal means, I'd say. Some other means. Oh, illegal is a harsh word. Yeah, man. Yeah, <laughs> just um, it's just uh, it's like it's a right, right. But okay, yeah. but the computers and labs have copies of ZBrush from, all right? Yeah, yeah. of course. So if it's I was a young searcher yeah. and I wanted to get, you know, just a little taster of what I could could use it for. Yeah, oh, yeah. Just, it oh, yeah, yeah. just download it. Come talk to me. Uh, I know a guy. And we'll, uh, All right, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'd like to take this moment to say get good does not condone stealing in <laughs> any form. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, yeah, um... What's a fish is... texture? Oh, man. Fish texture. I need I need a fish. Salmon. What's a salmon texture? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is good. This is close enough. Yeah, that's close enough. I'm gonna do hard surface stuff again now. This is so cool. Oh man, that's definitely awesome. Oh, how's your how's your monster coming, Mike? Uh, it's coming, it's coming. Uh, <laughs> Where is it gonna go, bro? Where's the monster? <laughs> <going>? <laughs> I use those uh snake hook. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that works. That works well. Uh, I'm, gonna, uh, I'm pretty sure I used it, but it's fine. Just used uh yeah clay build up because it's it's harsh stuff. Quickly, uh, I'm just breaking my neck. Um, yeah, we spoke about the move tool, but it's uh, I think it's whenever anyone starts, it's one of the most confusing ones because it's just it's like the, most, the most powerful one. Like, yeah, it, it just it doesn't work like a, like a like a normal 3D modeling one. What you do is you draw your gizmo out yourself, and then the middle oh. is kind of controls the normal. These uh, these ones do weird stuff. I'd say just play around with it though, because it's kind of hard to describe what what like they do. But it's actually once you get used to it, it's really cool, and it's I actually really like it. Yeah, it's very handy. Yeah, but that's that's definitely one. Whenever someone's like starting Z brush, they're like, why why would you do it like this? <laughs> I've got a great idea. Oh god! I have a move tool on rotational symmetry, so now I've got all these. See what oh happens. man! See what happens if I? Ooh. Oh! My, oh! Oh! I was trying to figure out how to do that. Maybe that wasn't that. Looks like shit. But... Ooh! Oh, that's trippy. I think I made a wheel. Maybe. Uh, what if I rotate? Oh, that wouldn't make any sense. Well, if anyone wants to know how to make this pattern, that's uh, that's how you do it. 
Yeah. Oh, while I remember though, I think probably the best advice for someone if they wanted to start learning ZBrush though, like as as amazing as we are at giving tutorials, um, go on the Pixlogic website and um, yeah. just watch all the all the beginner tutorials on the Pixlogic website. And then if there's anything specifically other than those that you want to learn, they've got so many t tutorials been, and they're yeah. all really clear and straightforward as well. Those have been some of the most valuable, yeah. And they're kind of like, they're coming quite like quick and, you know. Yeah. There's a lot, of, there's a lot of like, uh, I suppose like on YouTube, there's a lot of tutorials that might not not necessarily be the best way to do something. Like, yeah. Yeah. You get yeah, go, go given is. Source, so that's yeah. why Pix logic is always a good bet. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, I'm like, you may think that oh, it, it, it is good to like, play as I was saying earlier, but um, yeah, like you, you think stuff you wouldn't, wouldn't think of doing, you'll find out from those tutorials. Yeah. I wouldn't even thought of doing like something and then watching them gives you gives you like good knowledge. Um, so yeah, this has nothing to do with anything, but there's a good chance that Denzel is going to bring his Xbox One down, and we're going to buy a coffee off Halo Five. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. <laughs> Very exciting. <laughs> Can't wait for that. Sounds good. Are we all invited. I'm taking that as an invitation. <laughs> on the stream. Oh no. I'm going to have to figure out how to move the pivot point. That was easy. You just press the set pillow point button. Cool. Wait, what was that? It sure was. <laughs> oh, Josh is looking cool. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, I suppose it kind of turned into some sort of sci-fi aviator. I just, I've got aviators on the mind, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's. Oh, damn it! I hate aviators so much as well. <laughs> Once I get the exit. As well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that used to be cool, man. <laughs> you just ruined so many genres, so many things for you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think like probably by the end of this project, uh, I'll hate hard surface, and then I won't never bother doing hard surface stuff again. I'll just go back to my nice uh, organic stuff. Yeah. yeah. Thing is, though, for FMP as well, I'm really kind of like wrecking my brain trying to think of uh, like characters that will like kind of showcase my ability in like every area. Yeah. Because I think like one of the best examples of that that I've seen from people from our course is Rich Carey, because he had like examples of like everything to do with character art. He had yeah. like cool creative design, like anthropomorphic animals. He had hard surface, organic stuff, like humans, animals. It was mm. crazy. It's one of my favorite FMPs. Like, yeah. Yeah, it was just like a, it was just like a, like the perfect exa example of everything you should learn mm. as a, uh, as a characterized. But yeah, so I'm trying to think of ways that I can kind of incorporate everything into just like three characters. Yeah, I think creep doing a creature of some kind is definitely important. Yeah, yeah. definitely. You know, it's like that's on everyone, every like character artist's mind at the moment that we're, mm. you want to do stuff. You know, get the get the variety in our portfolio. Yeah. Mm. Sure, I'll manage it. Hope so, hope so. <laughs> oh man, Mike, that's looking really cool. I, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Just doing something. Yeah. 
Dan, are you just are you adding a will to it? What's uh, what's this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, because I was doing some. Oh, I don't want that one. Because I was doing some. I accidentally made some wheels, and I made a cat. So why wouldn't I combine them? <laughs> I really like the face. The face is cool. Uh, I think I think I might crash my zebrush. Oh dear. Oh dear. That's not a good sign. Oh, no. Oh yeah, that's too much of Dynamesh. <laughs> my PC isn't that great at the moment. I really need to upgrade. Especially since uh, I updated the uh, ZBrush to uh, the latest one, everything is really struggling to run. <laughs> is, it, is it a stable program or is it like Substance Painter where it just crashes every now and again? I think ZBrush is probably most it's pretty stable. stable. Yeah. I don't. Yeah, I don't really crash very much at all. I mean, I still save about hundred of every file, but <laughs> I don't have any real problems with that. Substance was just ridiculous. It's like every it 10 minutes it would crash. Mine never yeah. crashes here at home. Yeah, so I might, I might actually, because it's on sale at the moment, actually, I might, I think I might buy it and then. It was yeah. a and like, it runs better if you run off your hard drive. Yeah. I mean, that is probably worth 50 quid just to like, not crash every like two minutes. I think just in general, owning a copy yourself for 50 quid isn't terrible. No, it's pretty decent. Especially for um, we, we've gone oh, over an hour, so do you guys want to start wrapping up? Um, oh, really? <laughs> or are you guys um, happy to, to keep on working? That's cool. It's up to you guys, really. I don't really mind. I need to finish my table to put the sushi on. If you, if you, if you could like, um, if you could say one good thing about ZBrush, what would it be? Why would Why use it? It is the uh, right, convince me. Convince me, because I love 3ds Max. Why should I use ZBrush? Because um, um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not like Yeah. I'm not like into convincing other people to do stuff like if you like 3ds Max and that works best for you, then you know, do that. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. for me, like doing characters is you know, significant. Like that's just what the normal pipeline is now. I think. Doing a high poly, like for most high poly things, if it's not hard surface, it's probably better. It's just in my opinion, but. Fine. Interesting, interesting, okay. If you wanted a. I don't know, really. Why would you use it? Because I, I just didn't like 3DS Max very much. I think was oh. why I went to it, because <laughs> I found it far more natural to sculpt than it was to, like, move. Polygons and versus around. But maybe it was coming from like the final mm. back or something. Like doing playing with clay and just pushing and pulling forms felt so much more natural than moving a polygon or anything like that. Yeah. That just felt more like work and this feels more like you know, more like um, traditional sculpting, which is cool. Mm. Yeah, that's probably why I started using it and that's why I've continued. Yeah, I think it's what you yeah what you want to use it for as well. Um, yeah, I think using them together is probably the best thing. You can get like a, a workflow yeah. down where you can like throw something into Max, knock it up really quickly, throw it back into ZBrush, do something like that. Like working with them probably get you, get you the best results. Yeah, definitely, I agree. Like I think um I think too many people are like too quick to kind of uh, just say. Do one or the other, but like, there's always going to be benefits and drawbacks of any program. Like, um, I for the last project, I tried retopologizing in ZBrush, and uh, in like in some aspects, it was better than 3D coat. Like, um, mm -hmm. problem I had with 3D coat is if uh, the layer kind of had, if the object had like another layer underneath it, like it, like say if it was an object that I'd added like thickness to or something like that, uh, then 3D coat got really confused with which layer of like uh, vertices it was I was meant to be. Yeah, and ZBrush has had like a whole heap of other problems. Like I can't select the verts when they're hidden behind other objects and stuff, so that caused a lot of problems. I don't know. Like, 
Yeah, there's like because Ebrush can do a lot of things as well. I suppose Max can as well, but it's always just about kind of weighing up uh, what you value more. Mm. Yeah, whatever you're more comfortable with. Um, well, thank you guys. I think I'm going to use Ebrush forever now. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to uninstall 3 Max, like... and I'm just going to use Ebrush <laughs> from now on. Thanks, guys. Probably all the best ways to sell it, just being like, well, I'll use what you want, but <laughs> I really don't like going, you know, going back and be like, oh, no, it's better for everything. It's, it's not. It's better for some things. And... Yeah. Mm. But I use Ebrush. Because Satsushi is one of the greatest game assets I think I've ever seen. It's sushi, me. <clears throat> oh, I haven't, I haven't looked at Chris's sushi oh, yet. Oh, Chris! Oh, oh man! Oh, oh. very nice. Oh, oh. <laughs> I think that's probably better than a sushi cat on wheels, to be honest. Uh, I'm just gonna put that on, you know, on my screen as well, so it's better. <laughs> Also, we were talking about hard surface stuff earlier. Um, well, for hard surface and like character, ZBrush character design and stuff. Uh, Michael Pavlovich has a, some wicked videos on his tutorial. I mean, me and, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, his really good. Which is yeah. very cool. Also, yeah. have, have any of you guys mentioned uh, Raf Grisetti's tutorial? Because I've been cutting in and out. Like My connection's been really bad, so I'm not sure whether you guys have no, we haven't. mentioned him yet. But yeah, Grisetti's, uh yeah anatomy uh, sculpting tutorial for ZBrush is a really good one for uh, learning your anatomy for character art, like with and doing it all in ZBrush. I guess I don't know. Yeah, like, really good for making fine. characters. So that was probably the first thing. That... Say, um, I haven't actually started uh, using his yet, but um, everyone's been recommending it. Is uh, Scott Eaton's anatomy yeah. stuff. I watched. I've it downloaded. In, uh, his stuff, but yeah, I watched a, a, Z, a Z summit of his where he was uh, just doing like a really quick sculpt, and I was like, holy crap, this guy knows his stuff. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, it's quite just an, ana an anatomy, uh, like the anatomy guy. Yeah. Like, so, Raphael Grossetti, like that was probably the first major tutorial I watched. I think that was over the summer of uh, first year before coming back, before coming back in second year. So it's like learning, and that was why, like, you know, I knew more about ZBrush and carried on from there to just look more into it. And yeah, that's through the tutorials. It was very cool. And if you want to know about anatomy, like, just Scott Eaton all the way. Mm -hmm. Who I still haven't done yet either, but it's on yeah. the list. It's on the list, yeah, definitely. <laughs> mm. But yeah, loads of cool stuff. What's what, going what? on there, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> That's so <laughs> bad. <laughs> Trying to give him weird legs. <laughs> yeah. Can I pretend that this is mine? Yeah. Of course you can. Oh, this looks so bad, man. Oh, oh. Ugh. Ugh. Kieran, I can't see your screen. Can you not? No. I guess that's for the best. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I put on someone else's work instead of mine because my, my cat was. And my pen broke. <laughs> that's a nice looking cat. Oh, is that um, the Pavlovich guy? Yeah, check him out. Yeah. So you talk through like concept sculpting video. Mm. He's probably one of the main reasons I decided to concept as I went in ZBrush this time because it was 
not if it's Vidal, but... Yeah. It's, oh man, once you get, like, once you get into it, it's just, like, so easy and quick for just kind of making those, like, basic blobby shapes that are, like, enough for you to kind of, like, make a kind of character in a silhouette that reads, and then you just kind of go from there, playing around and changing shapes and stuff, making it more detailed. Yeah, exactly, so good. just pushing more. Yeah, it's very quick. Yeah, it's really good. Look at what he's coming up with. Oh, man. That's some very nice sushi, Chris. Hey. <laughs> nice sushi. That's what you want. Oh, yeah, I love how you guys all ended up modeling sushi. That's great. <laughs> 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 Sorry, Chris. Yeah, this is a dino machine. It keeps nearly crashing everything. Let's hope this one. Uh... Oh, and we're back. Yay. No crash. No crash for me. That's what I want. Um, Josh, your model with the belt around the neck um, gave John an idea. Uh, oh. <laughs> oh God. I didn't really think about that. <laughs> think about that. <laughs> the connotations of having a belt around someone's neck. <laughs> you really don't think about it. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it never crossed my mind. <laughs> oh dear. I'm not. I'm not that. I'm not that sick. Well. I'm so sorry, oh, I'm Chris. That is looking very. I'm sorry. Nice. I'm sorry if I offended any of you. <laughs> Made sushi. Hey. Yeah. There's my ref. That's my ref there. Oh, Dan, that's an angry cat. I'm trying, man. Uh, <laughs> definitely not happy with you, is he? Makes me feel so much better. Don't really know what I've made. It's pretty, it's pretty gross. Sushi. Oh, there you go. That, that feels so much better now. We got a chrome cat. Oops. So yeah, that's uh, that's the brush. Should we uh, call it quits? Yeah, I mean, yeah. We'll probably just. <laughs> I'm <laughs> uh, just going to quickly put a button. I think it's in a bar. It's not there. It's a bar. <laughs> Made a bar. Very nice. So I'm not stuck to myself. There you go. There's a bar. <laughs> delicious, delicious butt cheeks. Um, I don't, I don't really know what this is. Uh, uh, my my class is very so spooky. Well people are made. Christy made the most delicious looking sushi. It's just sushi, <laughs> man. I definitely put on a side for more. Man, sushi. Oh. Looks good. Looks good. Dan, you've made the uh, the Catmobile. The world painter. <laughs> the sushi. <laughs> <laughs> Cat on wheels. <laughs> it was so bad. <laughs> I apologize. This is why you get me on, guys. This is <laughs> short expertise. Top quality stuff, man. Oh, Kieran, that's nice. Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? Oh, look at that. Um, <laughs> nah, let's just kind of like, uh, yeah. Nice. There and all that. Yeah. Mm. Press the space button. 
Also, yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> oh. Um, yeah, I think I learned a lot today. I learned a lot about Zebra. <laughs> learned a lot about sushi. Well, I'm de- I'm definitely gonna have to re rewatch this episode. <laughs> yeah, there was some there was some interesting stuff. There was uh, it might have been a bit mm. fast. Probably recommend uh, you give it another watch. Yeah. Always looking like all the other tutorials we mentioned. So. Yeah, but we'll just do those. Those are probably. Mm. probably yeah, drop, drop some links. Drop some links. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. And you can you can drop them in the you know in the group later. Yeah, yeah, oh. we can do that. Cool, cool. Sounds good. It's sweet. Um, yeah. So on a scale of one to got good, do we get good? I made sushi. I've never made a sushi cat before, and now I have. So. I've never made sushi either. Hmm. Oh. I'm really sad. Well, now. I'd say like this a, was a great success then. I really missed out on the the sushi fun. <laughs> <laughs> I really wish I'd just made some sci fi sushi. Look what you made. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I could have made sushi, man. You could have made sushi. I mean, I can't really argue with that. You (laughs) could have made sushi. (laughs) I mean, I didn't make sushi either. But instead, you have to just finish your next project. Can't be character (laughs) done. Yeah. Yeah. I I like his project. Good one, actually. No, I really wish I, uh, like, I don't know, I think, I, I thought I was going to get through more of this helmet, but I didn't realise how long it's actually going to take. I spent loads of time just trying to get this visor right, mm-hmm. and it still looks all lumpy and yeah, whatever. I don't know. I'll get past it, right? Yeah. yeah. And I, one of the things I did was, when I was experimenting, I did like a bunch of quick sculpts, mm-hmm. so they were, I'm just getting up. So like some of them were soft, some of them were hard, but hard to practice. Mm-hmm. But they were they were quite fun to do, and I just, and like mm-hmm. I got quite a lot of practice very quickly in a short space of time. Yeah. All these hard surface, and then some more creepy, yeah, creepy monsters and stuff. Just find my pushing around forms and getting quicker, making random stuff. You mm-hmm. see how they got better from the start. So like that's the first one, and then <laughs> and the last one. Oh, but, yeah, yeah, I know. Cool. I think I might need to do that. That's really cool. Mm. Also, that was very fun as well. <laughs> that was look really fun. Mm. But yeah, all the yeah. experimentation. It's all good. Yeah, experiment, guys. Um, guess that's it. Thanks cool. everyone for joining us. Hey. Thanks for having me. Yeah, this was fun. We should uh, do it again. Oh, Kieran. No, Chris. Too much. Too much. <laughs> Ever. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's freaky, guys. <laughs> you could just put that in. Oh. Oh, it's like I can switch it. I'm like stroking oh, cool. my monitor. <laughs> All right. Um, thanks, everyone. Uh, enjoy the sushi. Cool. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We don't have Max. Uh, we forgot to say Max wasn't on this episode. Oh, um, thank you to you, Dan and Josh, for coming on the show. You guys did yeah, good. Thanks, guys. No problem. Well, good. I had a fun time. It was good. Yeah. Let's make a cool character. Go back to painting now. Yeah. <laughs> and on that, I feel like doing a character would have been more useful than a. I guess. <laughs> Yeah, good.